Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, David Burrows, as always. Happy Monday to you. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Um, it was a busy weekend for hockey, that's for sure, and lots going on, of course, everywhere else in the city of Sarnia. And I'm really excited to, to – well, I'm always excited about Mondays. I say it every week. Yes, I repeat myself a lot, but that's okay. I only repeat the good stuff. I love Mondays because of the great people I get to talk with, and there's some really cool people we're going to be talking to today. I got to talk about some great events. A couple of special mentions, though. I want to say uh, um, a shout out to my friends, Dress to Kill. There so you can see that right there. Yeah, I get the reflection. Dress to Kill. They've got a new album uh, slash CD, Vinyl Record. They've got it out on Vinyl Record, and they're uh, they're having a Mardi Gras party coming up, March the second, and we're going to give away a CD, and we're going to give away a vinyl record, and we're going to give away, well, I'm good, I wasn't prepared, I got tickets to the event as well, coming up March 2nd, Dress to Kill, Mardi Gras, I don't, I've never been to a Mardi Gras party, honestly, ever in my life, so I've got tickets to go to, so, but we're going to give away tickets, they're 10 bucks, it's going to be at the Courtright Silver Dome, what do you do at a Mardi Gras party? Hmm. You listen to great music <laughs> and, uh, well, it's a party. So there you go. So hopefully, uh, I got to get in touch again with our friend Keel Simmons from Dress to Kill. I know he's very excited for the event. It's a great album. Um, you're really going to enjoy the music and hopefully we got him here next Monday. We'll see about that. Uh, I just got this word in and I'm really, uh, happy and excited for my friend, uh, Dom Fernandez, my friend Dom. Uh, has MS, and I've known him for many, many years. I'm going to go into, wow, that long, 20 years. And I knew him before he was in a wheelchair with MS. And it's quite a, he's quite an uh, inspiring fellow. He, he's a fighter. He, he's just a no-quit kind of guy. He's come through so many battles. And he was inspired also by Dan Edwards, who is also – a motivational speaker, and uh, Dom wanted to start doing some motivational speaking. So he's got his first gig on February 20th at Rosewood Manor from 12 to 12.30. My friend Dom, I'm really proud of him. I'm really proud of him. Way to go, Dom. He's going to uh, give his first motivational speech in public, and I'm proud to say that I'm going to go live stream it for him so that all of you can watch. So that'll be on Wednesday, February 20th. So I'm super excited. Uh yeah, it's quite a story. So I got to stop there or I get teary eyed because I'm super happy for my buddy Dom. Way to go, Dom. We'll talk more about that coming up. All right. Um, some not so happy things, though. Unfortunately, the Sarnia Sting have been having a rough go. I, every week I talk about the Sarnia Sting, I've been referring to the Sarnia Sting as the stock market. Kind of go like this <laughs> they're kind of up, they're kind of down, uh, they're trying to level things out. But they're having a rough go. Although I have to say, it seemed like they were off to a pretty good start here. As you can see, taking on the Guelph Storm in their hometown uh, was a final score of 6-2, to two, which was a nice wake-up call for the Sarnia Sting. Kind of gets the – when you're winning, right, you really got a different mindset. When you're not winning, it's tougher to get into the winning mindset. So they had that, and then they brought them back here to Sarnia and failed their – and I, I don't like using the word fail because I got to tell you, uh, at the, uh, at the home game there, I saw a really incredible game of hockey. A lot of work ethic going out there with the Sarnia thing. It just, it was one of those, they just couldn't quite get there. Even Darian Hatcher, after the game, we spoke to him. He pretty much said the same thing. He said the work ethic was there. It was just couldn't seal the deal. And then the third game in a row yesterday, Sunday afternoon, taking on the Kitchener Rangers. Would have thought we would have seen some more things happening there. Um, final score, one to nothing. Now, many fans would think that that should maybe still be 0-0. Zero, zero. Both teams playing very, very hard all the way through. 0. 0.1 second left in the second period. Kitchener scores a goal. Now, here's the problem with 0. 0.1 second and scoring a goal. At least, of course, the fans were not happy about this. It had to be a goal under review, and it took quite some time. Wouldn't want to be a referee any day of the week, but that right there, it's one of those things. The brain can only process so quickly. 
to push that button to whether it's a goal. So they had to go back to video, and it was decided that with 0.1 second left on the clock, Kitchener scored a goal. Then they would come out into the third period and play very, very hard. They even had uh, some power play opportunities, one of which was the Sarnia Sting were five on three of Kitchener and just couldn't get it in the, in the puck there. It was a pretty exciting game. I know that Sting fans are disappointed. Uh, that being said, Ethan Langevin dancing on his head for the Sarnia Sting. I think he had, it was uh, 29 saves he had for the Sarnia Sting. And um, we got a chance to catch up and talk with him post game. We're going to go to that interview right now. And then we'll be back to share a few more things. And then my first guest, Elizabeth Soltis, will be joining us. So here is Ethan Langevin. Obviously, three games, two and a half days is, uh, is a tough thing for any team. But, uh, I mean, it looked like a pretty decent game, especially in the third there. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I thought today we just didn't come out strong the way we wanted to. Uh, we kind of kept to the outside, and it showed with our, like, nine shots through two periods. In the third, we picked it up, and we just couldn't get a goal to tie it up. Obviously, I think even though it is a loss, it's, I mean, one of your more phenomenal games today. You were looking pretty on. Yeah, I definitely felt good today, so that was good. When you see that goal go in with .1 second left in the second period, how does that affect the team heading into the dressing room? Uh, it's definitely frustrating, but uh, we knew it was only a one goal a game. We could have got back and tied it up, so it didn't get us too much too down. The work ethic's high out there. Even Darian Hasher yesterday commented on, on how well you guys have been playing and really getting your head in the game. Uh, taken away from this today and moving forward next, what do you do to work on your mindset to keep pushing forward? Um, you know, we just got to come out strong for our next couple of practices, and we got a good um, doubleheader Thursday, Friday against Windsor, a team that we can beat. So we just got to prepare for that. Just the guy coming out strong in the third. I mean, did the, did the goal have anything to do with that, getting a little fired up? Uh, yeah, maybe. You know, I think it was just the fact that we didn't think we were playing that well, so we had to pick it up somehow. It's good. Yeah, like Cameron's a really good guy. Uh, ever since he came here, we've gelled, and you know we don't really care who plays next. We just support each other, and it's good to have someone your age or around your age to put, like push you back and make sure that you're going. So yeah, it's a good relationship. Speaking of that, uh, obviously must be some sort of kind of healthy competition there, because ever since he's come over, I mean, both of you guys have been looking pretty good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, ever since he's came over, he's put up his A game, and especially as of late. Uh, it's really motivated me to put up my A game as well. On a positive note, how do you like those eSports jerseys? Uh, they were all right. You know, I'm not too much of a Fortnite player myself, but I thought that a couple of the guys liked them, and uh, they're good for the kids here. So. Yeah. Who is the Fortnite champion in the room? Probably Hugo. Yeah, he's really good at those kind of games. All right, uh, Sarnia Sting goalie Ethan Langevin joining us there, uh, bringing you, brought to you by a Blackwater Coffee. Thanks, Blackwater, for bringing that to us. And Ethan Langevin, he did. He stood on his head, 29 saves. Um, I have to say, talking to him post-game there, you could tell he was tired, and he certainly a little bit sad, you know, because, I mean, it was – he had to be there, but it was an amazing game. They played very, very well. And uh, now they'll go on the road, and they'll play Windsor on Thursday – down in Windsor, and they'll be back here, another doubleheader. They'll be back here on Friday night. Of course, they'll be live at the Sarnia Sting home games for them. So keep going, Sarnia Sting, and you can go online to sarniasting.com to get your tickets and get out and support some great hockey out here uh, with the uh, OHL. Family Day coming up, of course, and, you know, I talk a lot. Of, I say Sarnia Lampton, but it seems like I'm talking a lot about Sarnia. So I want to talk about our friends at Petrolia. They've got Petrolia Days coming up. If you haven't seen Bohemian Rhapsody, Go out there and see it. Uh, this all starts this weekend as part of the uh, Family Day weekend. Did you know that Monday's Family Day? Don't forget that. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, the first 400 people get to go in 
to the town hall and see Bohemian Rhapsody absolutely free, courtesy of the uh, Rotary Club. And uh, then they'll move on to Heritage Day the next day. So they're going to be talking a lot about the history of Petrolia. And there's all kinds of activities going to be happening throughout that weekend on Heritage Day as well. Uh, the Fireman's Open House will take place there as well. They're going to have a community breakfast. Hey, free food? I'm there. I'll be there. Uh, they're going to have free swim and bouncy stuff and all kinds of things going on. Take the 15-minute drive out to Petrolia. It's a beautiful little town. And it's, I don't say little town. They're, they're, they're a community-oriented town. There's always got lots of stuff on the go. So uh, if you haven't been out there, check it out, all right? Family Day on the Monday. This is really exciting. Coming up, we had our friend Rob Hardwood, Director of Parks and Recreation for the City of Sarnia, here last week. The tall ships are coming to Sarnia um, thanks to, well... <laughs> Thanks to the city of Sarnia, thanks to the Carpenters Union, thanks to Imperial Oil, thanks to tourism. Like there's a whole bunch of people involved in this. Not an easy task to negotiate and get these tall ships here. And some really exciting news coming with that. I'll be able to tell you more about that next week. August 9th, the 11th, partnering up with Blue Water Border Fest. We'll have Mark Perrin here in a few weeks to talk more about what's coming with Blue Water Border Fest. Artscape is uh, moving a week in advance to be all a part of the tall ships. And I can't wait to be a part of it all. It's uh, This is very exciting for Sarnia because talking to Rob Hardwood last week, uh, he said, looking at where the ticket sales were coming from, certainly a lot from Sarnia, but there are a lot of people from the United States and throughout Canada planning their vacations to be here in August. What a great opportunity to showcase and show off our beautiful city. Sarnia Lampton here. So uh, make sure you go online and get your tickets for that. Just go to ticketscene.ca. I believe that's where they're at. So, And if you're hungry, the Moose, they put on fantastic dinners every Friday. This week it's the Air Cadets are putting on their famous chicken. They have a secret recipe, I'm told. Uh, it's quite delicious, actually. So the Moose Lodge, that's this week, this Friday. You can get out there and enjoy that. The public is welcome. It's only $10 for chicken and all the fixings here at the Moose Lodge. We're going to be talking more about the Moose Lodge uh, coming up in uh, a little bit. We'll talk more about the Moose Lodge at the end of the show. And guys, Valentine's Day. Do you celebrate Valentine's Day? Listen, you want to know how you never forget Valentine's Day? Forget it once. <laughs> You'll never forget ever again. Uh, we don't do a lot. Jennifer and I, we don't do a lot for Valentine's Day. She says it's not a big deal to her. I think she that that really means it's a big clue to me that I really should be doing something. So Valentine's, she says it doesn't matter, but I think it does. Uh, Valentine's dinner. I want to talk about our friends at the new restaurant, the old Chippican Lake Point Girl House and Lounge. Fantastic food down there. I was in there for a visit the other day. They're also having live entertainment every Saturday afternoon from two to five. So you can get in there for lunch, stick around for some entertainment. And if you're really having a good time, just stick around for dinner, right? Uh, great staff in there and the owner's fantastic. And uh, we'll be talking more about them coming up as well. But Valentine's Day, don't forget Valentine's Day. Even if it's just, uh, the, only, the only thing Jennifer tells me, she says, is don't send roses because she just thinks they're just a waste. But I buy her a nice plant that she can keep for, I don't know. I better just stop talking about Valentine's Day because I might make a promise that I'll forget to keep or something like that. So we better just move on. Check out Lake Point, Grill House and Lounge on Facebook. All righty. Well, we're going to get to our first guest coming up here. Uh, do you like films? There's, you know, we have uh, some great theaters here. The Imperial Theater here, of course, with lots of live theater. We've got Petrolia Theater with lots of live theater. We have the Sarnia Library Theater as well. A fantastic theater in there, and and um, it's starting to get used more and more, which is fantastic. I'm happy to see that. Um, but right now, we're going to talk to Elizabeth Soltis, who is here in the lobby. I think she's ready. She's been patiently waiting. Elizabeth, Hello. thank you for joining me. Hi, David. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you making the time to get here. I know you had uh, some some struggle to uh, arrange to be here, so I really appreciate that. We'll get we'll we'll get right to the point here. You're a part of uh, the Sarnia Justice Film Festival. Mm, that's right. I re I was recently inspired to join as a volunteer because social justice is one of those commitments that's near and dear to my heart. So it, it's been a joy to be associated with this group, and our film lineup for this year is just really outstanding. So I'm happy to promote yeah. it today. 
I looked uh, I looked at a, a bunch of lists. I haven't been since uh, like the last season yet, so I, I got to make time to get out. But uh, I've always been impressed. There's always some 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 themes attached to it, like you know, like I say, it's social justice, right? But can you give a little bit of background on how this got started? And I know there's some recent events that have happened that you know, maybe you want to talk about about the film festival. Sure. So it's to my understanding that the Sarnia Justice Film Festival began in 2007 with a lot of local visionaries, one of whom recently passed away, Thea de Groot. Mm -hmm. She was considered to be, you know, really the, the principal champion of this whole yeah. initiative all those years ago, along with several others. And uh, yeah, she passed away last spring. So we're really feeling her absence. Yeah. And not just, uh, um with with the uh, Sarnia Justice Film Festival she really did a lot of things in our community and was very uh, kind and giving to our community so she's definitely a piece of the community that's going to be missed for sure mm -hmm. yeah, yeah we often draw upon her spirit for inspiration because uh she left quite a legacy behind because she mm -hmm. lived with such passion for these types of issues not just environmental but all types of social justice issues and I mean she really stood behind our mission statement which is sharing stories that matter um that matter in the world both locally yeah. and globally yeah what uh, well that's a, that's a good point you know because i think uh, you know sarnia justice film festival always seem to relate that to sarnia but these are are typically things that affect us all over um how do you it's got to be tough to decide what films to put out there and some gotta some don't make the cut yeah it, it is because we are so fortunate to have incredible uh, film selection to choose from. Um, but yes, every spring we gather a small group of us and this will be my first year doing that, yeah. uh, being involved with that process. And we just, you know, um, review a lot of trailers and have a lot of spirited dialogue is from what I understand <laughs> is typically what happens. And we come up with, yeah, four or five films that we all can get behind and uh, feel excited about. I'm sure uh, it's screening those films that you all go through. There must be a lot of uh, interesting conversation that goes along, uh, not just about the film, you know, opinions probably come out and uh, what works, what doesn't. Uh, um, I, have you been able to, uh, I'm guessing, make some new uh, friendships out of being involved with this group? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's only been a few months for me. But um, what I was thrilled about is in our very first meeting of this year, early in January, um, I corralled a few friends and someone else brought in a friend and someone else brought in a friend. And suddenly our numbers grew from three to like eight or nine um, folks who really want to be involved and engaged in, in this conversation. So we're all committed to growing the, the audience uh, during the films and to really um, doing our best to get great community guest speakers so that the dialogue that follows the film can really be rich and hopefully uplifting and um, entice people to take action if they feel inspired. Yeah. Well, this is uh, certainly, um, well, an important subject. I guess that this one is about Recovery Boys. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is basically about the uh, opioid crisis i guess could we call it is this a pandemic or is this is wow. it there yet um i don't know if i feel qualified enough to comment on that because that's a big word yeah um, it's a really big problem i guess is what i'm getting at <laughs> for sure and in fact i would say that um it, it is considered to be one of the top five local community crisis points mm -hmm. or, or serious issue points i'll say that um, and in doing some research in um, finding our two guest speakers, uh, one of the the women who I connected with, her name's Deb Cavanaugh. She's the manager of Stage Two Recovery at the Westover Treatment Center, um, and she deals with a lot of people who come through the doors looking for um, addiction support and dealing with recovery. And um, and she was telling me that yeah, opiate abuse is uh, on the rise for sure in Sarnia Lambton, as well as apparently the number one growing concern is um, the use of crystal meth. Mm -hmm. That, Yeah, growing in leaps and bounds. So I think this is an issue that has touched everybody in our community in, in some way, shape or form, whatever the addiction is, be it alcohol or opiates or 
um, whatever, whatever form it takes. Uh, sugar, as an example, is, you know, my own personal vice that I'm, I'm, yep. I'm content with. Yeah. So it, it's pretty scary and disheartening when one looks in the mirror and really reflects on how something um, has more power over you than you do in that moment, such that it, it distracts us from feeling what needs to be felt. And instead mm -hmm. of moving in, in that healthy direction and dealing with our emotions of what's going on in our lives, we reach for something uh, to support us. So it's it's a serious issue that I think is is well worth the time to have a, a sincere conversation about. Yeah. Well, and that's I guess where uh, I was I was going to ask the question, and, um, and and this would just be an opinion from you, I guess. Uh, you know, we we need to talk about things. You know, mental health comes up all the time. Um, we're starting to talk more and more about that, which is fantastic. Uh, we need to talk. So any, anything that's an issue, I've, I've always said, if it's an awkward conversation, it's probably one that needs to be had. Mm. Um, so that being said, uh, when it's an awkward conversation, people have a hard time overcoming that awkwardness and be willing to talk about and share their stories. But that being said, we're going to see some of that here as part of this as well as part of the post conversation, right? Well, for sure. In fact, one of our intentions for this film is to help destigmatize addiction, to really start diminishing um, the shame that is often attached to addiction, mm -hmm. which has people hide and become invisible and not want to speak about, like you said, want, not want to speak about the issue or um, if someone's you know struggling. And, and needing support, um, you know, how is it that we can take these issues out of the closet to really have radically honest yet compassionate dialogue about the issues so that we can all yeah. heal together? Yeah, well, and, and that's a good point because, you know, I think when we talk about mental health and the stigma that goes with that, we go, okay, we've, we're, we're finally accepting that mental health uh, is an issue and we're, we're becoming more comfortable with it. When we come talking open, let's just say the word it's drugs. We're talking drugs, drug addiction, whether that's alcohol, whether that's opiate, whatever that is. You know, we see people wandering in our city. Um, and I have heard people make up, oh, there's that druggie again, or there's that. And that's that's the stigma, right? Is that you know, bad person, or you know, I mean, I, I talk a lot about choices we make good choices, we make bad choices, and we've all done both. Um, and um, that's is, that's the part of the stigma we got to get rid of, right? I think is that all oh, that druggie over there or that we're labeling people. And we don't know what's gone through in that person's life. We don't know what happened to them that day. We don't know what losses they've had to deal with or what they're up. Like there's a lot of variables that happen in there, right? So um, yeah. This is this is obviously uh, you know one of the steps in our community. I know there's a lot of things happening out there, but um, are you are you getting good crowds for these types of films? We are, and the numbers are growing, um, which I'm noticing month after month because I've been a fan of Sarnia Justice Film Festival for many years. I've been going, uh, so I'm happy to contribute now as a volunteer. And yes, the numbers are growing, and we're even expanding the dialogue after the community dialogue such that people can go to the coffee culture afterwards and continue oh, yeah. the conversation. Yeah. Um, and, and this particular film, Recovery Boys, we have Tim Van Bodecom as one of our speakers and Deb Cavanaugh, who I mentioned earlier, and they're going to spark, I'm sure, some really thoughtful um, inner conversation as well as uh, with, with each other. And one of the things that I hope that comes out is how important it is to empathetically connect because mm. it, it's my belief that what's at the core root cause of any type of addiction or social malaise is disconnection yeah disconnection from ourselves from our essence from from each other such that you know we tend to isolate um and when i read that there's over forty nine thousand people in canada who have died from opiate um, abuse overdose in this past year or 2017 I was shocked I had no idea the numbers were that high and then when I dug a little deeper scratched beyond the surface I learned that it's anticipated over 700,000 people will die from opiate overdose 
from 2015 to 2025, which is a shocking number. Yeah. Shocking number. I just, uh, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I read that earlier today on the uh, uh, Sarnia Justice Film Festival Facebook page, which everybody yeah. you can go to. We're sharing that link here as well. And I, I was like, so to let's put that in perspective. We go 49,000. That's a lot of people. That's a small city. Yeah. It, well, it's almost the, it's <laughs> three quarters the size of Sarnia. Right. It's, it's, it's a city. It's, and, and when you put it in that perspective, you really go, so we're going to lose a small city every year. And now you're talking more than that. We're, we're going to lose like yeah. part of Toronto with the new numbers coming. <laughs> like, it, it, it's quite shocking to me. And, and with that, of course, of course, comes the ripple effect of all that yeah. pain that extends out to, you know, loved ones who are grieving the loss of, of their, um, their family and friends. And, and of course the economic toll and, you know, the social cost, I mean, even our hospitals, I think seem to be quite burdened uh, with dealing with this addiction. Well, so yeah, I, I'd love to see more people reaching out with courageous, uh, a courageous spirit and wanting to connect with people who are suffering. And our hospitals are already full with, other issues yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and people who really, you know, yeah. Um, so the, the problem is bigger than just 49,000 people. It's, it's well, what about accessibility though? I mean, we, 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 let's go back to the, we want to go back to the root of the problem. Where does this all start? How does this all happen? When I was in high school in the eighties, there was pot and oil and hash and that was it. And I'm saying that wasn't it, but that was basically it, right? Mm -hmm. If you wanted more than that, you could find more, but you really had to seek it out. It seems like now there's a drug for every letter of the alphabet and not just the English alphabet. <laughs> like there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. And then the accessibility to these drugs. How do we, how do we, you know, in this, we could probably do a two hour show on this and maybe we will, we'll get Deb Kavanaugh and, and our other speaker here, but um, how do we, where do we start stopping this? The conversations are great, but where do we cut it off? Mm, well, well, I mean, that, that's a big profound question. Yeah. And in my mind, where we start is with self. I mean, which of course is the only thing we can control in our life anyway, is ourselves yeah. Uh, in terms of how we think and how we speak and how we listen to each other and listen to ourselves, listen to our own inner wisdom. So, um, but it, the more I believe that we're able to connect with our heart, um, which might sound naive to some, but as far as I'm concerned, it is the most profound action we can take is heartfelt connection with people who are in emotional pain and people who yeah. are really needing, um, you know, a, 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 an empathetic shoulder to lean on. And, and just for them to openly share their story without, like I said earlier, the shame, without the, the fear of being judged, without the, you know, the, um, the guilt of, you know, people who have, let's say, um, relapsed. Uh, right. Yeah. So what would, it, what would it look like if we were to develop a capacity with, with ourselves and with, the, with each other such that we could really be authentically able to connect from our heart? Um, yeah. I think that in and of itself would make a huge difference in our community. I agree. Uh, yeah. So I, agree. I don't think it's naive at all. I think it's something we've forgotten about. Indeed. And we need to regrow that. And that starts with most places. It starts with our families. I think uh, um, one of the other things, and, and we're going to have to move on. You and I need to stay connected. We should put this together and get some special guests and do a special show on this. Um, but the, you got to change who you hang out with. I think that's a part of it. I'm a true believer and I've learned from my own mistakes and observing others. You become a piece of the five people you hang around the most. Mm -hmm. And if you're hanging around people like I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. And interestingly enough, most of the people that hang around don't smoke. <laughs> it's just the way things yeah. had to change. So it's, it's th that ripple effect that you talk about, but that's the tough part, isn't it? Because we have often, if we're around those people, we've considered those people to be our friends and I'm not going to dump my friend because of my own issues. Yeah. yeah indeed. In fact, 
there's a famous adage of we are a part of the conversations that we surround ourselves with. Yeah. And our consciousness is a reflection of, of those conversations and we're a mirror to each other. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I think that that's a great wake up opportunity right there is to ask yourself that honest question of, am I surrounding myself with people mm. who, who help I hang out with? <laughs> yeah, who, who helps me to feel empowered? Who helps me to feel, um, you know, um, re really self-connected and feeling mm. good about my life as opposed to the opposite? What's even tougher is um, sometimes the stopping what am i trying to say to stop hanging around your friends that you've been hanging around what's tougher than that is sometimes it's family mm. and that makes it yeah. even tougher right so yeah. uh elizabeth i have to move on but uh, uh can you tell everybody when this is happening i know it's free which is fantastic yes although we do welcome donations at the door yeah um, yes but this particular film recovery boys is playing at the library auditorium Saturday, February 16th at 7 p.m. And okay. since I have you on the line, if anyone's interested to mark your calendar for our next film called At the Fork, which is March 23rd. And then the last film of this year is happening, uh, that's called Happening, and it's on April 13th. So mark your calendars. We'd love to see you out. Fantastic. And I'll tell you what, let's have you or uh, somebody else wants to come back to talk about the next film. Sure, happy. Uh, that that link you had to use to sign up here you go it's the same link so okay. feel free to book that in as soon as you want and we'll get it out there i think this is really important what's happening uh thank elizabeth you thank support. you so much yeah thank you for your support david appreciate it you're welcome we'll talk to you soon okay bye bye elizabeth soltis uh making time out of her very busy day i appreciate her doing that uh to talk to us about recovery boys the opioid, opioid, am I saying that right? Uh, crisis, uh, crisis, I don't know. I asked the questions, is this a pandemic, an epidemic? To be qualified to say that, I appreciate that. It's just a really big problem on so many levels. Um, I, I've seen so many changes in the city just in the last five years and really extremely in the last two years all over the city. So Recovery Boys happening this Saturday at the Serena Library Theater. Thank you again, Elizabeth. We'll talk to you more about that uh, and the other films coming up in the future. All right. It's time. Get those vocal cords ready. My next guest was even singing on his page earlier. I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> but Sarnia Sings is coming back to town. It's volume three of Sarnia Sings. What's up, Sings. everybody? Hey, Adam Dumont. How are you, my friend? Good man, how you doing? <clears throat> Another busy guy. I'm really i i I feel really blessed with all these busy people taking 15 minutes to talk to me <laughs> about some yeah. stuff that's really important. I'm coming to you you're, live today from uh, our beautiful Corona. Corona. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you're parked in a parking lot, and you got a video camera in front of you and headphones on. Yeah. Not a suspicious looking character at all. <laughs> Try not to be. <laughs> Adam, uh, thanks for being here, buddy. Uh, Sarnia Sings, uh, Volume 3. This has had a really tremendous impact on our community since you started this. Do you think it would be this big as it is right now? Uh, I don't know what this says to me, but yeah, I wish it, you know, I wish I, I saw us selling out our first year. I, I was hoping we sold out last year, and, and we did. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a believer that... Uh, you know, you, you put a good product on stage and uh, I guess the big question was, does Sal and, uh, Sarnia have the talent that's uh, necessary to put on a good show? And that's that was the gamble and, and it paid off. And uh, because it's such a, um, a great atmosphere and a great cause, it, it, it has caught on. So yeah. uh, it, it's, it's been really cool. But yeah, no, uh, I've 100 percent thought this, you know, this would work. Yeah. Well, you're a busy guy. So for you to take time, excuse me, I know you put a lot in the community, but I know this was a very special project for you. And uh, I was really glad that you asked me. And pretty much when you asked me to be a part of it, like, I don't think you got the sentence completely out. And I was like, yeah, I'm in, you know, like yeah. this is, and I think that's the reaction you've been getting from uh, the community. And um, like, you've got some sponsors involved in this that are like yeah. right on board. Do you want to talk about some of them? Yeah. So uh, first thing that popped in my mind is uh, when you said, uh, uh, you know, for me to ask you, I thought of the other people I've, I've asked to uh, participate as singers or sponsors. And it's, it's absolutely nuts. I would have never thought, but uh, everyone has said yes. 
Um, uh, to be honest, there's uh, there was one singer that said no, and it was because he was going to go to his brother's wedding in Vancouver or something like that. Right. But everyone else that I've been um, around has been extremely supportive and uh, and has said yes. So it, it's actually getting to the point now where uh, we're getting so many yeses that we have uh, <laughs> a lot of people uh, wanting to sing, which unfortunately, unfor- unfortunately, uh, you know, we're going to have to s- sift through them and make sure, uh, you know, we, we, we do the show justice yeah. and, and uh, but that, that's what's hard. But as far as sponsors go, uh, yeah, we got uh, a lot of sponsors back. Uh, obviously Royal page will be the, uh, one of the sponsors. Um, I, uh, uh Bioped, uh, uh, still reaching out to a lot of them, uh, and, and corresponding. We're basically got the month of February to line that stuff up before, uh, you know, we, we got, we go full bore, but, uh, most, and, and the surprising thing is new, new sponsors are coming out and, and reaching yeah. out to me. And that to me is insane as a salesman, uh, to have people come to you and say, yeah, let's give you yeah. money. So, uh, we've, we've had the Sarnia Lampton real estate board come out, uh, and want to support, uh, uh, Lampton Ford I actually just got off the phone with them earlier today. I'm going to meet them tomorrow. Fantastic. Hopefully something, something comes out of that. And, uh, yeah, so it, it's just been, um, it's a good, good place to be for you, Adam. Cause if you yeah. get all these people fighting over you, yeah, you kind of got some negotiating power. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's hard. Eh? It's hard to say like to come from a place of, uh, you know, taking everybody's, you know, money and effort and, and time and yeah. to now turn that around to like, uh, we might have to say no to, I don't know, uh, someone singing or, uh, it, 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 someone wanting to do the carpools are very popular. So, yeah. uh, we, we've, you know, kind of made a, a point of, of, you know, uh, having a, a selection of who gets in there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the singers on stage, a lot of people want to sing this year. So it's definitely spreading and uh, it's working. Uh, yeah. Well, so- I'm, I'm glad I got my song in when I did because, uh, <laughs> there's a long <laughs> list there and, uh, uh I'm glad you, I you- sang what I did. Yeah, I right. I wouldn't put myself on again. <laughs> well, you and I had uh, we've had a lot of conversations over this, uh, and you know we had one recently, and and that's really been the struggle is we're trying to decide, you know, well who gets to, who doesn't get to. Um, I know you're kind of trying to um, not repeat some of the previous singers, and that's that's a tough decision sometimes, you know, because uh, there's some, there there've been some fantastic singers, um, but there's really quite a. Uh, people, I just want people to understand that if they're not coming back yet, it's because there's a huge pool of yes. singers yeah. and support that we want to give everybody the same opportunity that everybody else has had so far. Yeah, uh, this is a real feel good thing, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it is very hard. And and if there is anything like most, and I'm not saying anything bad here at all, but most people have been very, very uh, respectful about the process. And uh, yeah, you know, putting on a show like this is is quite a lot of work. So to get people who respect the process is, is very helpful. Uh, a lot, every singer, uh, that we've had in the past would be, I'm, I'm sure more than happy to come back. Uh, most have voiced their, um, uh, <laughs> a- admiration to do that. But, uh, yeah, we want to make sure that, you know, if there's someone out there that wants to sing, they get a fair shot too. Um, and then we do like to say thank you to our previous singers, our alumni, as I like to call them to yep. uh, come back and, and hopefully do a duet with another past singer to kind of put a little special twist on it. Yeah. Um, you know, to make them feel special. Uh, but yeah, it, it's uh, it, it is a nice uh, way to, you know, incorporate new people uh, because you just never know, right. There's a kid out there that maybe didn't start singing till, you know, six months ago. Yeah. And he's great or she's great. And uh, that, that's what we want. We want, we want kids seeing, seeing the show uh, we want the, I call them the undercover heroes. I'm looking for <laughs> the people that can sing, but no one knows that they can sing. I'm, I'm yep. desperately looking for those people, uh, you know, quite reserved any story obviously, or any connection with, uh, uh, you know, the suicide prevention and uh, mental health initiatives. We'd, we'd like yeah. to honor those people as well. So, uh, lots to think about when you're trying to book a show like this. Yeah, for sure. Well, there's lots, there's lots of moving parts. That's for sure. As you've learned. Um, although I do want to point out, uh, and I'm glad to see he's coming back. There is somebody who's coming back. He was there last year and he played the piano with the, uh, the band and he was not expected to, he was really there for one song that he performed. 
and we just had to have him back again, right? So yeah, Dave, Dave Thomas, Thomas is coming back. Uh, I can't. Yeah, it, it's a weird story. I think you and I were at Rib Fest when when I saw him on stage performing, and I'm looking at yeah. you going like, "Who's that, Dave? We gotta get him." And uh, <laughs> you know, little do I, he was just a magnificent addition last year, and uh, putting him at the piano uh, with the with the band, I. I said this the other day. He he's like a rug, an area rug. He really ties the room together. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you he, can move him around wherever you need him. True. Yeah. <laughs> but he's he's so talented, and yeah. uh, the band had asked for him back too. So uh, he's coming back as a piano player. Uh, and the other asset is uh, him and his wife Aaron. Uh, Aaron does a lot of voice lessons. So right. uh, there are times where you know, somebody may want some rehearsal time because we don't really give people rehearsal time before the show. No, that's right. Um, it's nice to say, okay, go see Dave and Aaron if you guys want to practice up, especially uh, when I pair them up as a duet that, you know, they've never met each other before. So it's a kind of a good go between uh, to get the duets going. So um, yeah. I should say before we forget that this year I kind of sprung a, a contest where Yes. Uh, we're going to put out $500 cash to somebody who sings on their phone and posts it with the hashtag Sarnia Sings. So to all your viewers out there, share and like this with all the uh, uh, people in your family that like to sing uh, or everybody. We don't know who wants to sing. And uh, it, it will take the good, the bad, the ugly. We do not care. We just, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I put my... want to spread there. the word too. I want, I want, I... I really thought I should be the first one to do it, but there's been a bunch of people that have already done it. But uh, I threw myself out there this morning just to say, Hey, I don't care what I sound like. I'll do it anyway. Uh, so we'll, we'll love you either way. Um, and it's not a, a contest to say who's good and who's not. It is just, it, it's a random contest. So uh, throw your voice out there. Um, you know, try to, you know, stand up, be proud and uh, you know, spread the word of Sarnia sings. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you just never know who, uh, who can sing. So I'm just curious, okay. uh, digging a so, little deeper. Okay. So you don't, you don't care who hears you sing. You said that, right? No. Okay, good. We're going to play your video right now. <laughs> I've got it here on the Sarnia Sings page. Uh, uh, here we go. I think I can do this. <clears throat> I've been really trying. so long and if you feel like i feel baby then come on oh come on Woo. let's get on oh baby let's get on let's love baby okay that's it I don't care who you are. Marvin Gaye, let's get it on. That's a great song. That's uh, that's pretty awesome for sure. And uh, they're all a good example. You can't win the 500 bucks though. But I have seen uh, I seen some. I saw Peter Frangus out there. He put his out already. Yeah, shout uh, out to Peter. Doing some Lionel Richie there. So anything goes. What's the, uh, um, I, I know you've been able to gain a lot from putting this on. Uh, you, you personally, you know, if you've mentioned, you know, that you've gotten quite a bit out of this for yourself as, as far as learning, uh, and, but getting the message out there, what happens with, uh, the, the money that's raised? Cause this uh, is the third year now. What, how does that kind of work? Uh, money raised goes to, uh, basically initiatives and uh, initiatives we like to, I like to personally see get done, um, it's an unfortunate uh, business, this world of fundraising, and mm -hmm. uh, it's very competitive. Uh, it is a lot of, you know, who you know. And okay. very, it's very, very unfortunate because um, in, when you're talking mental health and, and suicide prevention, um, I don't want to uh, see anybody get missed. Uh, because of the competition and and um, competitiveness of, of fundraising. So uh, we are there to champion uh, people like St. Clair Child and Youth, Canada Mental Health, um, who have been recipients of our money before, uh, in communicating and uh, putting together 
uh, I guess the way you could look at it is like a sieve. And our job is to fill the holes in that sieve as much as we possibly can. Um, so the biggest thing that we've seen uh, is the communication now with these charities together yeah. um, and, and coming up with a plan that says, okay, well, if they, if someone needs to go there and, and for whatever reason doesn't get the help and, and just leaves, then what do they do? So uh, it, for me, the, the biggest um, uh, uh, issue is, is the communication between all the programs and making sure that if, if there isn't uh, a program um, um, filling a hole that, you know, our money goes to something like that right away. Yeah. Fantastic. So, um, yeah. It, you really said it well when it says the competition in, in this, this fundraising world. Um, and through all of that, I mean, you know, there's government funding, there's government cutbacks. We've seen a lot of that federally, locally, um, so it's good to see these kind of initiatives happening to fight, like you said, to fill those gaps because there are always cracks in the system somewhere. Uh, people get missed, uh, and yeah, we don't want to see that happen. But it's a, it's an ongoing challenge. So I don't think we can have enough of this kind of thing with 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 Sarnia Sings and the different initiatives that are happening in our community. But something else that comes out of this as well, really, is a feel good at the end of the show. Every show. You know, so far at the end of it, I know you and I, we always connect and we kind of hug and we, yeah, you know, and, 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 and we do that with everybody that's there. There's a real connection that's happening there that says we're all a part of this mm -hmm. and, and we're all connecting, sharing our stories. And uh, we've seen some big change come from it. Well, it really, uh, what I think gets to the root of that is you have people who are getting up on stage and putting aside their fear and or mm. their own mental issue, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, anxiety or, or something similar yep. and, and voicing that I am somebody that has this or I have struggled with this in the past and being able to uh, put yourself on stage with, you know, a, a lot of people looking at you. Basically, what it comes down to is it's a judgment free zone. And that's right. You can get up there, sing your heart out. Um, and you couldn't pick a better audience for it. You really, you really couldn't. And, um, you know, I, I'm very proud of the fact that when these people, uh, come off stage, whether they uh, feel like they have a mental health issue or not, definitely feels better for being there. And, and there is a, a sense of camaraderie when you're done that, uh, it, it really is like no other. And, and that's why we kind of, you know, coin the term the alumnus, right? Because like these people, uh, you can kind of lean on them a little bit and say, uh, yeah. Hey, who do we need for next year? Or, uh, th you know, they're not getting paid any money for this They're but they're just, <laughs> you know, all of us together in a cause, uh, you can see, really see some movement and, uh, and helpfulness. So I like the way people are just, uh, yeah, exactly. They're, I've been approached, I don't know how many times through uh, the last couple of years with people that have been in the show, uh, their, their relative kid, something has been in the show and, uh, it, you know, they open up and, and have no problem talking. You know, I felt I've never met these strangers before, but you feel a connection and friendship already. So it yeah. is, uh, it, that's a surprise that, uh, I, I never saw coming, but it is a really cool um, feeling at the end of the night, we all get up there and sing that last song out and, uh, hopefully yep. some balloons and confetti get, you know, blown on us and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, but, uh, yeah, yeah. It's just a real good, feel good night. I I'm very proud of it. And, uh, it should uh, be, that's good. Yeah, it's really cool. Talk, uh, I know you got to get going and we'll wrap things up uh, before we tell everybody tickets and all that stuff, but talk about the band that's a part of this. Yeah. The band's called uh rock star live. They're from Toronto and, uh, they're mostly uh, they're either touring with other bands or, uh, but they're professionals. Uh, the, uh, the bass player, I believe. Uh, yeah. He, the bass player uh, was in moist back in the eighties, nineties. Yep. Sorry. I don't know which one that was. Uh, the drummer last year was in big wreck. Uh, so th like, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot I of think the guitar player was uh, killer, killer dwarfs. That's right. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, um, and these are, prof these are rock stars. 
Yeah, the, and this you, is what you they get to do. Share every the day. stage with them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now that being said, they they do not showboat. They are there to make sure that you you feel and look like a rock star yourself. So that's right. Uh, they're just so tight. I remember last year. Kind of funny side story here is, uh, I had asked them like a month and a half before the show that I wanted them to do a mashup of a couple of songs just to kind of blow the audience away. You know, curtains yeah. open and just boom, go. Here we are. And, uh, yeah. So I get there day of the show, four o'clock. The band shows up, and I uh, just wanted to go over that. Uh, uh, you know. Um, start of the show and uh the bass player turns the drummer goes oh yeah we uh we're gonna do Katy perry and uh, an acdc song and just mash it up and the drummer's like oh no one told me that and here i am <laughs> full flop sweat like guys like, what? like yeah <laughs> Se- seven o'clock is showtime and uh they banged it out and you wouldn't <laughs> you would never have known that the drummer didn't know what they were supposed to do minutes before the show. Like, uh, sorry, that wasn't at four o'clock. That was minutes before. Curtain yeah, it was. was. It yeah. was like maybe 20 minutes before. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you, were like, and, you were sweating a little, <laughs> but it, 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 what's great about these guys is we had, uh, um, you know, they have a list of songs that like 600 songs or something like that, that they could do like that, like a drop of a hat. And whenever there's a singer that has, um, uh, a song that they want to do that's not on the list. Well, we I send it to them with full confidence that it'll get done perfectly without uh, they've, they've without, learned the without songs. any issue. Yeah, so yep. it they just honestly just need twenty minutes with some sheet music and they're done. Um, these guys <laughs> these guys are incredible, really really good, cool guys. They're the real people for sure. How much yeah. are the tickets for this event? Tickets are still only twenty five dollars. Um, I'd like to see how long we can keep that price. Um, twenty five dollars doesn't matter if you're front row or up in the balcony. Um, and, uh, we will, uh, we will announce, I don't know when, probably sometime in March, uh, for, uh, ticket sales. Um, we need to get the sponsorship out of the way before So tickets we, are not on sale yet. No, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so, but they will be $25 and they'll be able to go to Imperial theater.net to get those, right? That's right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So the issue is when, when you sponsor, you get tickets yourself. So, right. uh, we need to, basically go through the month of uh, February here, solidify our sponsorship so that then we can uh, square away those tickets and then open tickets up for the general admission. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to being a part of it again, Adam and cool. uh, big pat on, on your back for doing this. Cause it's been a fantastic initiative. I see even uh, more problems coming. In other words, good problems. People are going to be fighting over it. We might have to go, rent a big stadium or something if uh if we keep filling maybe two nights we'll see a two night show yeah i don't know it, good problems <laughs> only good that's problems. right fantastic All right, adam you. thanks so much for uh, taking the time of your day have fun out there in corona i know you and i'll be talking again soon and uh thanks so much again for being here today no problem have a good show see you Dave. bye all right our friend adam dumond who is a busy guy but he's got time for his community and uh very proud he is as he should be for sarnia sings May 2nd, coming down to the Imperial Theater. Tickets will be $25 for this. Don't wait to get your tickets once they go on sale. This sells out. It is sold out every year. This is the third year. Each year from the start has sold out 610 seats, only available. So get into that. I'll say hello to, uh, probably not around anymore, but I will give my shout out to uh, my friend Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth. I saw my friend Alfredo out there. Thanks for stopping by. Dan was here as well. And now our friend Corinder is back here again. What did I miss? Uh, lots of great things. You'll have to watch the replay, which will be available. Coming up tonight on Twitch, I'll be live with my son Jason, who I like to call the B-O-Y. Father versus Sun Night on Twitch tonight starts at 8 o'clock Eastern. Tomorrow night, I'll be live at 8 o'clock Eastern with Twitch Talk on Twitch. Don't know what Twitch is? Go check out twitch.tv and you'll see. And uh, I'll be sharing my links for that as well. I want to make sure I don't forget anything. Oh, yes. The Moose Lodge we talked about earlier. They're bringing me into the Moose Lodge to do karaoke. I'm excited for this coming up on February the 16th. That's this Saturday starting things off. It's their annual karaoke contest. It's everyone is welcome to come. And uh, going to be some prizes, cash prizes. Food will be there and all the fun. So come on and check that out, February 16th. you got to be there by quarter to seven to register, and the contest begins, karaoke begins at 7 o'clock. 
and uh, hoping to uh, get a nice turnout there for this. It'll be three weeks in a row I'll be there doing this with the Moose Lodge. We'll be talking more about the Moose Lodge as things uh, every week we'll be talking more about the Moose Lodge. What game will you be playing tonight with Jason? Well, I like to play this game called Brawlhalla, but we might play Black Squad or Fortnite or I don't know. We'll see what happens. We don't really plan it out. It's just whatever works. Uh, if you don't like looking at me or you can't take me video, you can uh, listen to me on the road. Take me with you wherever you go. Now available on uh, Google Podcasts. We're on iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Anywhere podcasts are available, you'll be able to pick this up uh, coming up shortly. Uh, within Probably within 24 hours, this will be on there. So there you go. Wow. Uh, will you be live streaming the karaoke? No, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to do that. So that's just the way it goes. All right. I want to say thanks again to our friends um, at Blackwater Coffee who support us here on the show every week. And I'm trying to show them. It's just uh, there we go. Yeah, our friends Blackwater Coffee give us a uh, nice support here every week, uh, as well as at all our Sarnia Sting home games as well. But that's all the time I got for you this week. Have a great week and an even better weekend. I will see you next time right here on the show live. Bye for now.